are you sharing? Good, Alhamdulillah. Thank you. And you? Yes, Alhamdulillah. I'm fine too. Okay, meanwhile, you can tell me, uh, was everything clear to you in the previous lecture? Or do you have any question to ask? Okay, so inshallah, today we'll be having our second lecture related to health and social care in context. So in previous lecture, if you remember, I selected the uh, healthcare area as a children healthcare area, or you can say young people healthcare area. So I will be covering all the areas related to that healthcare mm -hmm. department. Okay. Understanding of structural organization of chosen healthcare or social care area. Okay. This is our learning outcome. And under this learning outcome, today we will be studying the agencies or the organizations other than our main health care organization that are basically supporting our health care area. Okay. So our health care area was child health care area. And we will be looking um, in detail the other organizations or agencies who uh, that are working uh, in support of or that are basically facilitating the child health care areas in US and UK. Okay. The main key points of today's class will be the types of hospitals in United States. What is the organizational structure of a hospital generally? And what are the roles and functions of staff working over there? Okay. So these are the three main points, focus points that we will be discussing in today's class. So before <clears throat> going towards or proceeding to the main topics, let us have a recap of previous lecture. So in previous lecture, we uh, went through understanding of structural organization. Yeah. Which, the health or social care area of our choice and the mm -hmm. role responsibilities of agencies responsibilities. yes um, roles and responsibilities of agencies which are external to the area so if you remember we studied who unicef and a nursing institute and nice so all of these agencies the main responsibilities of these agencies were discussed in the previous lecture and so now we are starting our today's class that is types of hospitals in us united states so basically there are more than 5000 hospitals in us and patients should look for the right hospital for their needs 5000 hospitals are you know too much in quantity what? in us there um, us is quite big state a lot of uh, uh, you can say areas are actually covered in um, United States. A lot of areas and a lot of uh, sub-states. So patients who are people who are living over there in their communities, they should look for the right hospital. They should select the right hospital that actually meet their needs, their requirements. For example, if any person is suffering through orthopedic problem a problem related to their bones or joints mm. you must visit any hospital that has specialized doctors in orthopedics okay so and uh, most of the hospitals present in us are uh, are basically specialized hospitals general hospitals are only few in number okay so uh, of course the people living over there should select the hospital according to their disease according to their requirements so most hospitals <clears throat> provide medical and surgical care for acute illnesses or conditions. Acute bird means short-term illness. For example, flu, cough, fever, or uh, headache. Okay, so these are acute illnesses, short-term illnesses. They they remain only for a short period of time, and after uh, taking proper care and regular medicines they uh, vanish all over the services available to patients can differ across the hospital systems and even between the hospitals within the same system okay so of course every hospital may not be offering the inpatient and outpatient services 
or emergency care services so the services that is uh, that are uh, offered by the hospitals it can differ from area to area from hospital to hospital or even from department to department within the same hospital hospitals approaches to patient care may differ based on hospital size staffing location resources and other factors okay it means that patient care is depended upon all of these factors hospital size the staff of the hospital the location the resources that has been provided to the hospital and many other factors like the distances like the location of the area okay for example if it is present in any rural area then the hospital services provided may not be uh, up to the mark or as required uh, generally by the patients secondly the staff whether the staff of the hospital is well trained well educated or not they have sufficient experience sufficient experience of working in a hospital or not okay so uh, resources many hospitals they don't have very efficient labs but by here yeah. talking about the hospitals of us so of course not all maximum hospitals will be provided with uh, sufficient resources almost every hospital will be provided with the sufficient resources but some hospitals that are located in towns or uh, 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 you can say the village type areas they may be uh, not well equipped or not having sufficient resources okay so these mm -hmm. approaches or you can say these facilities or these factors they also contribute to availability of uh, or the, you can say the they play a very important role in uh, meeting the required needs of the patient because of these differences it is important that patients and their caregivers understand which hospitals can offer the specific healthcare services that they need sometimes the hospitals present in your nearby areas are not well equipped they are not yeah. provided with the sufficient resources okay so in that case you should prioritize or uh, you should give priority to those hospitals who may uh, that may be present at distant areas but they are well equipped they have sufficient resources they have proper labs okay so every hospital e any hospital that you select for your disease for the treatment of your disease must you must consider that all the resources should be present in that hospital every facility should yeah. be provided over there instead of moving from one hospital to other all of the requirements should be specifically present in the same hospital so this is the main point that you should consider okay there are four types basically four types of hospitals in us that which are community hospitals federal government hospitals non federal long term care hospitals non federal psychiatric care hospitals okay so community hospitals are basically general hospitals that are present in uh majorly in number in us a big amount or big percentage of uh, sorry um, a big quantity you can say or a big number of community hospitals are present in the us they actually have almost every specialist present in them every specialist physician present in them and they are present for the betterment of people living over uh, there uh, and they are basically government aided government funded hospitals so that is why they are known as community hospitals but the services pr present in them are not so much uh, up to date or you can say they are not uh, uh, up to the mark so that is why they are known as community hospitals means basic needs should be met basic requirements should be met for every patient but maybe their labs are not efficient enough maybe the radiology department is not efficient enough okay 
in that case some federal government hospitals are present these federal government hospitals are you can say one grade more better or uh, they more are advanced. more well equipped as compared to the community hospitals okay then comes non federal long term care hospitals these are those hospitals in which the patients usually get admitted for their longer stays for their longer care within the hospital mm -hmm. okay they may be suffering through some chronic illness and they need to uh, get themselves admitted in the hospital they need to be supervised by the physicians for longer period of time so mm -hmm. such patients yeah. are admitted in non federal long term care hospitals and mostly most of the non federal hospitals are private hospitals they are not government funded hospitals then comes non federal psychiatric care hospitals such type of hospitals are specialized psychiatric care hospitals only the patients having some uh, psychiatric problems they are admitted in these hospitals okay so these are the basic four types of it, hospitals present in um us okay it's i mean uh, non psych non psych uh, non federal psychiatric or rehabilitation or long term treatment also for psychiatric patients care okay so this type of hospitals hospitals are those hospitals uh, where the patient related to some psychiatric need they need to get admitted in the hospital for their cure uh, prevention sorry treatment okay so four type among four types of hospitals the first one are the government hospitals or community hospitals mm -hmm. the second are the federal hospitals or government hospitals as well but they have uh they are better equipped well equipped than the community hospitals and uh, also the patients can get admitted to uh, these hospitals for their proper care the third one are the non federal long term care hospitals these are the private hospitals or uh, these are not funded by the government uh, of the us and here also the people or the patient with chronic illness they are admitted and the fourth one are the specialized psychiatric care hospitals the persons with psychiatric needs they are usually admitted in such hospitals they are treated in these hospitals okay so basically four types of hospitals are present in us united states so let us discuss them one by one first is the community hospitals or non classified sorry non federal acute care now by the term acute care it means that only short term illnesses can be cured in these hospitals and for but uh, the patients cannot be admitted to these hospitals okay in case of chronic care in case of chronic illness means long term illness they will be admitted to uh federal government hospitals okay not the community hospitals like you can uh, see what do you mean like outpatient uh, uh yes outpatient, outpatient. Hospitals. yes outpatient hospitals and while the federal government hospitals this these are inpatient hospitals right yeah. american hospital association h a third are located in large cities some community hospitals provide care a general hospital of concern or expert trauma and cancer care that often verified by accreditation organizations like american college of surgeons community hospitals can have as few as 6 beds or more than 500 beds why is it so because outpatients these are outpatient hospitals only the patients came in they get their medicines and then they go back 
to their homes. That is why there can be six beds minimum or maximum of 500 beds. Okay, you can say that uh, emergency mm -hmm. care, emergency care in that to uh, less than 24 hours is given to the mm -hmm. patients. Acute illnesses, the patient with acute illnesses are treated in community hospitals. They are not well equipped with uh, labs, radiology departments, Although physician, expert physicians are present in these hospitals, but they are unable to admit the patients in uh, their hospitals, okay? So, uh, they, because they only treat with acute illnesses, they only provide medicines for their diseases. They do not provide supervision. They don't, do not provide long-term treatment for uh, different kind of diseases. That is why... A fewer number of beds are present in community hospitals. So they are present in larger cities. It means they are not present in rural areas. Also provide general care. Generally, all the physicians are present, but they provide facility to only outpatient treatment. Inpatient treatment is not provided in such hospitals. Community hospitals can also be classified as major teaching, minor teaching, or non-teaching hospitals. Okay, so it means that besides the treatment of hospital, community hospitals also provide the uh, facility of teach as teaching hospital as well. Now, the teaching hospital can be, of course, to the medical students or the nursing students. Teaching hospitals train future physicians and other healthcare professionals. They also have ongoing research projects or clinical trials and provide care for patients with rare or complex conditions. Okay. Teaching hospital means that they provide care to the patients along with teaching uh, the future physicians, future specialists, or uh, it is very rare that specialists are being taught in uh, community hospitals, but generally uh, physicians can be trained or can be taught in teaching hospitals along with the nurses. Okay, clinical trials, research projects, and in outpatient care, these are the main three subjects that is being uh, provided in community hospitals. Now, teaching hospital can be major teaching hospital or non hospitals as well. There are some hospitals, community hospitals in the U.S. that are non-teaching hospitals. Major teaching hospitals or academic medical centers may be affiliated with the medical school, while non-teaching hospitals have professionally trained medical staff and focus on providing essential care for patients in a community rather than medical training and research. Okay, so community hospitals are further divided into three main categories. Major teaching hospitals, teaching hospitals or minor teaching hospitals, and non-teaching hospitals. Okay, so in major teaching hospitals, physicians, medical students, they are being taught and seldom it happens that of a... Uh, expert physicians or you can say specialists are being taught at teaching hospitals. While in non-teaching hospitals, none of the physician or nurses are being taught. Only they provide uh, specialized health care to outpatients. Okay? Patients and that to outpatients. While in minor teaching hospitals, so similar uh, care as that of, uh, sorry, similar services as that of major teaching hospital is provided. But in major teaching hospitals, medical journals, then, uh, and uh, you can say uh, specialized uh, research projects are also being uh, taught or uh, carried out. While in minor teaching hospitals, such facilities are not provided to the medical students or the physicians. They are, you can say they are just being trained over there. Okay. So this is another facility that is being provided to the uh, physicians along with the patient care. And then comes federal government hospitals. About 200 hospitals are operated 
by the federal government in United States. Okay, these hospitals provide care for routine medical and surgical problems for specific patient populations, such as active military personnel, the Department of Defense, the Department of Health and Human Services, and the Veterans Health Administration oversee these hospitals. Okay, so these are also government hospitals. They are uh, more well equipped as compared to the community hospitals. But these kind of hospitals, these kind of government hospitals are related to specialized forces present in the U.S. like military personnel or you can say military department. Okay, so federal government hospitals are related to military or defense of any country. For example, it can it can be the Department of Defense, it can be the Department of Health and Human Services, and the Veterans of uh, Veterans Health Administration. Okay, so almost two hundred hospitals, two hundred federal government hospitals are present in U.S. and because they are related to uh, defense uh, personnel or military personnel, then of course they are well, more well equipped as compared to the community hospitals. They yeah. provide both services, inpatient services as well as outpatient services. Okay. Okay. Sure. Non federal psychiatric care. More than 400 hospitals exist in the private sector to serve the unique needs of patients with mental health illness requiring acute hospital care. Yes. These hospitals treat conditions such as fear, depression and substance abuse so, so non-federal psychiatric care these are the private hospitals which provide a facility of care to psychiatric patients especially psychiatric patients almost around 400 hospitals are present in the united states and they treat the disease uh, conditions like depression anxiety and other mental health problems it seems non federal high, it seems that they have a high um cases of um psychiatric care yes exactly and it also shows that a big uh, population of united yeah. states suffers through um, depression or you can say the mental health problem that is why specialized psychiatric care hospitals are present over there Non-federal long-term care. Patients with extreme illness that no longer requires acute care are often referred to a long-term care hospital. These facilities provide medical and rehabilitative care for prolonged periods. Okay, so these are also private hospitals and they provide inpatient services to the patients who are suffering from chronic illness the patients can, are, can be uh, admitted to the, to the hospital and they are provided with premium care why the premium care is provided to the patients because these are not government funded hospitals these are private hospitals and of course the persons the individuals who are who own these hospitals uh, their major goal is to gain profit and in yeah. order to gain profit, they provide premium facilities to the patients because they charge for uh, these facilities to the patients. Okay, so long term non federal or non federal long term care hospitals are also present in US and they are quite uh, they are having uh, quite efficient staff, quite well trained staff for the treatment of their patients. So these were the type of hospitals present in. Uh, U.S. or you can say basic kind or uh, uh, basic kinds of hospital present in U.S. Now, what is the organizational structure of a hospital? In our previous class, we discussed that what is an organizational structure and how does the organizational structure of any hospital contribute to the proper functioning of the hospital. Mm. Okay. 
so and uh, there were four kinds of um, hospitals present in sorry sectors present in any country and um, they can be government they can be private or uh, they can be voluntary sector charity sector while because we discussed only the child health care area so usually yeah. the all the factors contributing towards uh, the child health care were discussed in our previous class now let us have a look on briefly on uh, the structure of any hospital generally this kind of structure hierarchical structure i have told you this earlier hierarchical structure is present in almost every hospital okay while as far as if we discuss about the roles and uh, responsibilities of the staff then we can say that not a uh, centralized structure is present in hospital okay internal structure you typically as hospitals are set up with a hierarchical and divisional structure this structure means various levels of staff ranging from high to lower level positions are responsible for others within their respective division okay so this is basically the structure of a pyramid from higher mm -hmm. to lower level positions and because higher level positions are usually occupied by a uh, one to two or you can say maximum four to five individuals or persons while the lower level positions are occupied by a number of workers a number of employees so that is why a pyramid type structure is present in any hospital and that pyramid type structure is known as hierarchical structure or divisional structure in which the designations flow from top to bottom from ceo to lower level workers or employees and all of them are responsible for their working their job as well as of their colleagues in the same organization okay so now <clears throat> this is the internal structure of any hospital let us take an example of a thousand bed government hospital present in the us okay so roughly this kind of structure is present in almost every government hospital and if you see very clearly directorate of medical education dme is present at the top of the pyramid then comes superintendent now the superintendent can be a person related to medical field while the person related to non medical field as well the person the superintendent who is related to medical field will be dealing with the physicians okay. the nurses the uh, paramedical staff okay while the person yes please yes surely uh, were no, you no, saying no. something no 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 i was low but it's okay 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 while the superintendent that uh, who is related to non medical <clears throat> uh, things you can say he must be supervising the administration or the sport services facilities now under the medical superintendent comes the clinical staff paraclinical staff and the nursing superintendent or nursing staff as well okay now you can see that clinical is related to all of the physicians while the paracl sorry paraclinical is related to wards radiology department Uh, uh, and all the staff present in all of the wards the wards can be psychiatry neurology surgery plastic and cosmetic and mm -hmm. other <clears throat> departments okay as well as the emergency neurosurgery nephrology orthopedic urology endocrinology dermatology std cssd and others okay so all of these are uh, para clinical staff includes the staff that's present in the wards the nurses the male nursings the uh, other people other persons okay who are basically aiding the physicians all of them comes under the category of paraclinical staff while the clinical staff includes the professors additional professors assistant professors lecturers internees and postgraduate students as well 
now if we come to the nursing superintendent nursing superintendent will deal with matrons senior sisters or nurses staff nurses probationary nurses auxiliary nurses and midwives okay mm -hmm. and now if we jump towards the non medical superintendent he is dealing with administration and support services and it, it includes the lay secretary purchase officers office superintendent udc and ldc clerks class for employees and waste disposal department transport department ambulance department engineering biomedical dietary okay so all of these comes under the sport services department so this is a rough or you can say a general layout of any government hospital present in fact this layout not only represent the um, government hospital present in us only but also generally this is the layout of any government hospital present in any country and this is actually a pyramid type structure because we have uh, represented everything in flow sheet form that is why the actual structure is not uh, clear to us but if you see uh, very deeply you can uh, observe that only one person direct dme is present at the top while a number of employees are present at the lower level yeah. okay so this is hierarchical structure present in almost every hospital roles and functions of an individual hospital what are the main roles and functions of an individual hospital single hospital if the organizational structure of a hospital is not planned and coordinated there can be disastrous and potentially life threatening consequences therefore hospitals need to have a clearly defined and precise organizational structure to ensure that no mistakes are made during healthcare provision and administrative processes of course for the proper functioning of any organization that organization should be established properly its structure should be pre planned its staff should be uh, uh, pre enrolled before the organization start working properly and almost everything from its aim objective working the chain of uh, working or you can say uh, the flow channel everything should be decided prior to building any organization okay and if the organization is not well planned of course the uh results can be disastrous and life threatening why the results can be life threatening because your institution your organization will be dealing with the patients in future yeah. the patients can be chronic they will be having some chronic diseases along with their acute dis uh, diseases so a minor mistake can lead to a loss of their life okay so that is why in order to prevent the life threatening consequences every organization especially the hospitals should be pre planned and even in fact their staff should be pre enrolled comprehensive and holistic organizational structure can help hospital employees understand their day to day responsibilities facilitate decision making and revitalize the employee performance and productivity okay so every person every the person of every kind of staff whether it is administrative staff physician staff nursing staff paramedical staff every person should know his responsibility daily responsibility his duty and he should be committed of performing his duty well because he is working in very sensitive department when he's very sensitive organization so generally the staff who is present in any hospital are having a hierarchical structure it comprises of the board of directors executive management hospital and departmental administration patient care service management patient service providers okay so let us discuss them all so the first mm -hmm. is the board of directors the board of directors is a governing regulatory body that helps hospitals make higher level organizational decisions 
the board of directors for hospitals usually consists of medical experts and influential members of local communities hospitals that are affiliated of or overseen by universities may also include teaching faculty on the board of directors okay so board of directors usually comprise of the medical experts or phys uh, physicians uh, as well as the high members or known members of local communities present in that area or in that city okay mm -hmm. so why the other members are included in the board of directors of hospitals because they are familiar with what kind of diseases can outspread in their areas or, or what kind of spree, uh, diseases have been outspread in their areas in the past okay and they also know they are also familiar uh, with the initiatives that have been taken in the past and that can be usually taken in case of outspread of any disease hospitals that are affiliated or overseen by the universities may also include teaching faculty as the board of directors so the hospitals that are teaching hospitals as well they consists of the teaching uh, their board of directors also include the teaching staff a few members of the teaching staff and the board of directors is responsible for guiding the hospital's mission statement and sure. future goals so these are the persons these are the people who are involved in decision making related to uh, administration point related to the disease management or disease control as well as the treatment plans or you can say the equipments the instruments required uh, for surgeries minor surgeries major surgeries and for vaccination programs everything each and everything or every uh, action that has been taken in the hospital will be decided by the board of directors they will be mm -hmm. the person who will be taking the bigger or important initiatives who will be deciding the important initiatives uh, that the organization will be going to take furthermore the board of directors must create long term strategic plans for growth and stability so besides the treatment of their patients besides the maintenance of hygiene uh in their organization and many other things related to medicine or health point of view they also play or they also aim on growing their organization well in the community okay now how their organization will grow how their hospital will grow in the community it will be possible only when their hospital will be providing the optimum facilities to the patients and once the hospital will start growing will start becoming becoming more stable then of course they will also be the board of directors will be able to generate more revenue as well okay so these are the uh, two main aims of any hospital carried out side by side executive management executives are responsible for successful, successfully performing the hospitals day to day managerial decision making a hospital executives organizational role is usually extremely specified depending on its specific function they are responsible for this includes financial resource allocation medical executive decision making and administrative operations so board of directors will be planning the roles planning the policies the regulations while the person who will be uh you can say the team of the individuals who will be implementing those rules who will be yeah. implementing those regulations and they'll be making sure that everything is going accordingly these individuals are known as this team is known as executive management okay so the executive management will be basically managing the all rules that have been implemented please 
I said the board of directors are people, the person who are uh, deciding upon the rules and regulations of the organization, while the executive mm -hmm. management are the persons or the team of the persons who will be practically implementing those rules in the organization. They will be making sure that everything that has been decided by board of director is actually happening. It's happening physically. Okay, so they are responsible for financial resource alloc allocation. If the board of director had have uh, decided that a hospital will be taking funds from this and this organization, so the ex executive management will take that idea or uh, bring that idea into uh, physical existence. They will make sure that the the specific organization will be providing the their hospital the funds. Mm -hmm. Executive decision making and administrative operations. So all the administrative operations, all the executive decision making, implementation, the financial resource allocation, these important tasks they will be carried out. Executive management of the hospital. Hospital and departmental administration. Department administrators are responsible for reporting to hospital executives specific daily departmental operations of the organization and carrying out decisions made by executive management. These include supervising the provision of emergency healthcare services, oversupply and case of necessary legal equipment, monitoring the departments and much more. Mm -hmm. So hospital and departmental administration. This depart these departments are basically responsible to report the daily activities carrying out in the hospital to the executive management. Because executive management are the sole persons who will be keeping a check on day-to-day -day activities of any hospital. So of course, the third person, third designation, sorry, the third designation that is coming in chain of command of any hospital is hospital and departmental admin and departmental administration. They will be check keeping a check on day to day happenings, day to day uh, day to day affairs of the hospital, and then they will report to the executive management. Okay, now what kind of uh, job they will be doing? They will be supervising the provision of emergency healthcare services okay it means that they will be keeping a check on what kind of emergency healthcare services are provided to the hospital they will be keeping a check on supply and purchase of necessary medical equipment so whenever there is a deficiency or shortage of any medical equipment or there is a requirement of medical equipment then hospital and departmental administration will report it to the executive management and they will make sure that the required equipment will be bought on time monitoring the departmental surgical activities and much more it means so they are dealing with the practical things they call the 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 operation yes the operations exactly the mm -hmm. practical things the operations the medical equipments and the emergency healthcare services, all these things are mm -hmm. supervised by hospital and departmental administration, and they will report it to the executive management. And executive management will take further uh, orders or the decisions from the board of directors. Now comes the fourth designation, the fourth level of uh, Hospital structure, you can see. Patient care services management. Patient care managers are hospital employees that oversee and manage health care service providers. And this include creating employee schedules, ensuring that the overall health care provision process is carried out appropriately, confirming that the hospital complies with legal regulatory requirements requirements and addressing the patient concerns okay so patient care service manager management these are 
the individuals they can be physicians okay they can be physician physicians who are maintaining the ledgers means they are preparing the schedule and mm. these are the ones who are deciding that which uh, which physician or who is going to perform night duty who is going to perform emergency duty who will be present in the hospital in the, these hours of specific hours of the time so they will be deciding the duties of their physicians duties of their uh, specialists and according to their timetable their devised timetable every physician will be working accordingly so it means they are responsible for the provision of proper uh, or you can say specific ailment required facility in the hospital mm -hmm. they are the one who are deciding that physicians will be present from 8 to 2 from 2 to 5 then from 5 to 8 the time so keeping who are the uh, sorry what time keeping the time keeping scheduling yes uh, time scheduling maintaining the ledgers mm -hmm. they are assigning duties to the physicians basically they are the one who will be deciding that uh, uh, which doctor is present in the hospital during the daytime who will be yeah. present in the night time and uh, who will be the dmo okay so who will be the head of the department who will be performing their duty and they will be uh, assigning the duties to the uh, doctors according to their efficiency because you know the head of the department should be most efficient doctor in the whole department then comes patient service providers patient service providers include all the employees that directly provide medical care to the patients now here comes the physicians and the nurses including the doctors nurses laundry workers therapists and more patient service providers are responsible for communicating with patients personally maintaining the individual patient medical records and ensuring that patients receive the best care possible okay so patient service providers are the doctors nurses laundry workers therapists and it means that these are the person who are directly in contact with the patient uh, the source of the business yes exactly so these such kind of person such kind of employee means physicians they are the one who are directly in contact with the patient they must be dealing with the patient they must be uh, learning the mental health stability of the patient along with the physical health of the patient so mm -hmm. because they are directly in contact with the patient so they know very well how to deal with the patient how to treat his disease depending upon the symptoms depending upon its 